All right, here on PunchTheFace.com, we are joined by Invicta fighter Rachel Ostevich, who's going to be a part of Invicta FC 14, live on September 12th on UFC Fight Pass. Rachel, how are you feeling here today? I'm doing great, and how are you? <laughs> I, I'm doing fantastic. Now, like I said, you're going to be a part of Invicta uh, uh, Coming back to Kansas City here on uh, September 12th, um, you're going to be facing Andrea Lee, a.k.a. AKA KGB. Uh, you know, when this fight was first presented to you, what did you think of the matchup? Um, you know, I'm really excited about this matchup. Um, she's my toughest opponent to date, and um, I'm just really excited. I know her style is um, different from mine, so I'm excited that her styles are going to... I'm excited to see how her styles are going to play out. <laughs> Now, it's been a minute since we've been able to see you here in the cage. Last time the fans saw you was here in Victor FC 10 uh, back in December of last year. Um, have you been itching to get back in the cage? And, and what, what was the delay on getting you back on an Invicta FC card? Yeah, I'm definitely excited to be back in the Invicta cage. It's been a long layoff since December 5th of 2014. So, um, you know, I often get a little anxious and... Um, I, whenever whenever they call me, I'll be ready because I'm always training in the gym. Um, so, yeah, I'm just, I'm just so excited to get that call and to know that I have a good opponent and a good fight lined up. Exciting. <laughs> Now, you know, during this eight-month layoff, you know, since that last fight, what have you been working on most in the gym during that time away from the cage? Well, I like to um, mostly work you know, everything up. Um, Andrea, she's, she tends to be, it looks like she's a kickboxer. She's very confident in her kicking. So, you know, of course, um, I'm going to be working a game plan for her. And, um, yeah, so I'm just trying to be well-rounded. Also, stick to my game as well. I don't want to fall into her fight. I just want to fight my fight. So, just, I try to be well-rounded in all areas. Now you know you, you've gotten a lot of buzz here here within the featherweight fly, excuse me the flyweight division. But do you see that as being your permanent home as a fighter as your career progresses here over the next few years? Do you see that as being where you plan to be at, or is it just kind of going to go as a you know each fight that comes you'll kind of decide what weight is going to be fi uh, best for you to fight at? Um, I'm definitely um, feeling at home at 125. I feel my strongest at 25. Um, I feel fast, I feel, I feel good, and um, I definitely want the title at 125, and I can I visualize it happening, so um, 125 is worth that for now, is, you know, um, later in the future, an opportunity presents itself, and you know, it's something to think about then, but for now, 125 is, is where it's at for me. <laughs> And do you think that you, you know, maybe a, a couple of more wins that you'll be able to uh, possibly challenge for that belt? Maybe you know, top this time, not this time next year, but maybe the top of next year. Uh, if you able to pull off a win here uh, next month, and maybe even again before this year is out, is that something to where you think you should really be having your name thrown in the mix for a title shot? Then, oh, most definitely. Um, I'm definitely. Um, I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't, you know, for the title. I, uh, I'm training twenty. I'm doing my um, title rounds already in, in practice, and I feel good. So, um, yeah, I just take it one fight at a time, focusing on September 12th, Andrea, and I'm excited. Hopefully, um, you know, my name gets thrown in the mix for our title contention. Now, I know you said, you, you know, before we started recording that you just finished with your strength and conditioning, but, you know, as not only are you, uh, you know, training for a fight and being a fighter, uh, you're also a parent outside of the cage. You know, how tough is it to balance those two, uh, your personal life and your professional fighter life, uh, to make sure that you have equal time for both and being able to put 100% into both of those endeavors? Well, it definitely is a challenge. I think it's one of my biggest challenges being, you know, a full-time mommy working two jobs, coaching at the gym, and then full-time training as well, and also being a wife to my husband, you know. But, you know, it uh, works, works it all out somehow. Um, my, I'm so blessed to have a family who's involved, saturated in MMA, you know. So I'm really blessed. Um, when I train, my mom is at the gym. She's like our team, co uh, team mom, so she's watching my baby. I got plenty of um, teammates. And aunties who all watch my baby while I'm training, and my husband is also a fighter, so it's kind of good. We try to take our fights, um, you know, 
Jake will take a fight. I'll be watching Baby with no training, you know. And then I'm fighting, so, you know, he'll, he'll, um, take, you know, we, we take turns and work it out. Um, so it, 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 it's hard. It definitely needs some managing and, um, some work. But, um, nothing we can't handle. <laughs> you know, is it important for you to have that sort of support system around you? You know, your we know your brother also is an MMA fighter. Your dad is fought. You, your husband as well. Is it important to have people around you in that circle who know what it is, what you're going through, and preparing for a fight, but also that are family to be understanding it up and be able to help you out when you need it? Oh, well, definitely. Um, I'm so grateful for my family and my friends. Everyone around is. You know, we all have the same goal in mind, and um, we all go through the same things. We all feed off of each other and motivate each other. It's a lonely work. It's a lonely road in MMA. You know, so definitely um, feeding off each, off of each other. It's like iron sharpening iron, and I couldn't be more grateful. Now, one thing that I do want to ask you about is how have you been able to deal with the attention you receive as a fighter? Because you kind of burst on the scene to a lot of people's eyes, you know, during the Invicta uh, FC 10 weigh-in with the warmer to woman outfit and then also fight night with the same outfit. And let, let, let's be honest, you're, you're an attractive woman, but how have you dealt with that attention and, and some of the, the weirdness that comes with that? Because, trust me, working in this business, there are some weird guys who do MMA journalism. <laughs> you know, how, do you, how do you deal with that and just kind of, like, filter it out or just ignore it because it, it can be sometimes overwhelming uh, for the female fighters. You know, um, I'm honestly flattered. <laughs> um, that, you know, I mean, I don't know what to say. I'm just, you know, I'm just grateful to have fans, I guess. Whether they like me for my fighting or for, for my Wonder Woman outfit or whatever reason it is, I'm just, I'm just, um, I guess, really grateful for, to even have fans, you know. Um, and in Victor 10, um, I was the first fight on the card. I wore my Wonder Woman outfit, outfit and it, it kind of caught on. And, you know, now I have this big fight in my second fight in the Victor, and I'm just, I'm blessed. I'm grateful. Um, I don't take it for granted. I work hard, and, um, you know, it's just God's favor. And, you know, this is me flattered and honored <laughs> so i mean it's nice <laughs> well good deal now now for invicta fc 14 are we going to expect maybe the same uh color kind of color color scheme you're going to work with maybe another wonder woman outfit of some type or are we going to come with something else and something different uh for the fans to enjoy on ufc fight pass <laughs> um i definitely like to take advantage of my freedom of wearing whatever I want in the cage, and um, you'll definitely be seeing the same Wonder Woman theme. Not sure if it would be the same outfit. Um, kind of keep it a little some mystery here, <laughs> like a superhero. <laughs> but um, yeah. Well, well, definitely. Well, that's why the fans have to tune in on UFC Fight Pass here on September 12th to catch Invicta FC 14. Now, Rachel, definitely uh, let the fans know where they can keep tabs on your career, uh, your Twitter, social media, um, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Rachel Octavich. Um, I'd like to make a shout-out to my sponsors, the Crawfish and Crab Shack, also known as Miley Sunset Bar and Grill, um, Kavai Loa Family Clinic, Showset Mouth Guard, Hawaii Fit Nails, Polo Design Crew, and um, I'd like to thank my teammates at Jesus is Our Gym and my girl team, Crush Street Hawaii. <laughs> well, absolutely. Well, Definitely, uh, you know, best of luck in training here for the, these last few weeks here before Invicta FC 14. Uh, enjoy the beautiful weather of Hawaii before you come here to the Midwest uh, for yeah. Invicta. <laughs> Uh, you know, because I, I, I'm here in the Midwest, I'm here in Kansas City itself, so, uh, yeah, I'm a little bit envious of your location compared to mine, so <laughs> definitely soak it up and enjoy it before you come here and put on a, a fantastic performance for the fans here on September 12th. Awesome. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely enjoying this. 
Um, whenever you feel like coming down along, I'll give you a tour of the island. <laughs> Well, absolutely. That, that's one place I've said before I leave this earth, I definitely want to visit uh, Hawaii and, and definitely enjoy uh, the, the sights and sounds there of that area. But, Rachel Ostevich, we appreciate you taking our time with us here on Punch to the Face. And again, we'll see you on UFC Fight Pass September 12th, uh, Invicta FC 14 against Andrea Lee. Uh, th thanks again, and uh, again, we'll see you here in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much, Brandon. It was my pleasure. <laughs> All right, thank you.